Okay, so today we're going to motion track this object using the new Glaxomate tool in Shotcut. But before we start, if you don't know what this Glaxomate tool is, I made a quick explainer video to catch you up. But first, watch this one. So I got my project open in Shotcut with the footage I want to use. Now remember, you can use this effect for any purpose and whatever footage you want to use. The process should still be the same. First off, you want to make sure that your main clip is on the timeline because from there, we're going to go ahead and click on this icon to open up track operations and lay a second video track above our original one, acting like an overlay. From there, just make sure you select on your original clip and we're going to go to this top toolbar and select on open other and then click on the animation Glaxomate option, which then a new window will open up. Now, this is really important that you set up right. Our duration by default will be set on five seconds. And if you want to increase that, you can go ahead and do that right now. And you can set it for a minute or however long you need this tracking animation to be. And since this is an overlay, our background will be set on transparent and then you can click on OK. Then your preview screen or window should turn black because the new element has been made. And I'm just going to pause it real quick. And this is where our animation is going to be once we open up Glaxomate. And to do that, we are just going to go to our properties window and click on the edit button. That should open up Glaxomate. Now, if it's your first time using this program, don't be overwhelmed. It's pretty straightforward. The next thing you want to do is import your image or whatever element you're using to track. And we're just going to go up here to file and add image if it's an image or import whatever you're using. Now, I'm going to select on this shotcut logo I made for my files and then click on open and it's the there on the preview screen. Now it's a bit too big, so I'm going to hold down command on my keyboard or shift if you're on Windows and just drag it down from the corner to make it smaller. That way the scaling still remains the same. So from here, we're just going to save this animation by clicking on the icon in this toolbar. And then on the bottom, it should say file saved. And then we can close this or switch back to Shotcut. And as you can see, the Shotcut logo is on our scene now since it's been saved. From here, we can simply click and drag it from the preview screen to the second video track we made earlier on the timeline. And we can see it now as an overlay. And all I'm doing is just trimming it to fit my original clip on the timeline. Now, if we hit play, obviously the image is not tracked yet, so it's a still image. We just have to animate it using some keyframes. So let's fix that. Just make sure to select on the overlay clip and then go back up and click on edit to go back to Glaxnamate. And as you can see, this time our image and original clip is loaded onto the preview screen since Glaxnamate had time to render the scene. And if I go ahead and play it, you'll see that the footage is sped up, but once we're done, it should be back to normal. And honestly, the major part of our work will take place in this timeline, which is composed of different layers consisting of our original clip, our shotcut logo, and the animation layer. And we can see that too in the layers window right beside. We can also disable layers as we need. But the most common tools can be found up here in the timeline toolbar. And the first tool is the frame indicator, which tells us how many frames there is in this clip. And that number will change depending on where this timeline marker is placed, which is really important for our keyframes. The next one is our play and pause button, followed by this looping icon. And these controls with the arrows will allow us to move along the video frame by frame or skip to the first frame and the last frame. Super helpful. And probably the most important tool is the recording button, which will record every keyframe we set. Now I know it's a lot of steps, but remember, you can do many other things with this Glaxomate tool, like other animations and much more. But if you just don't have time or much interest in making your own custom effects or animations, don't worry because that's where Motion Array can help you out. Motion Array is literally the place to get quality templates, animation, stock videos, music, sound effects, pretty much everything. I talked about them before, so link in the description and you can try it out for free. Now we're ready to animate this, but before you move any object, make sure that you're using the selection tool, which can be found here in this icon on the side toolbar. So I'm going to adjust the size of this image while holding command or shift to be a bit smaller and place it exactly where I want it. And you can also zoom in when needed and adjust to the default position by using this button on the bottom. Perfect. Now we're going to use the record tool to animate this. But before that, I just want you to first go ahead and find your image layer, whatever that is for you, and then go to the transform section. There should be a drop down with even more layers, and we're going to focus on the position layer. And just go ahead and select that and your image on the preview screen and click on the record button and it should start recording. Remember the keyframes I mentioned? Well, this tool records each keyframe we make one at a time. So what I want you to do is to use the keyframe control icon or use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move one frame at a time. And we're going to select the image and move it to the correct position you want it to track it to. 
and if we go back to the timeline on the position layer, you'll see these yellow keyframes, which is the animation that we're tracking right now. So literally just move forwards one frame and then position your image accordingly and then repeat. In my case, I want to track it to my hand to make it look like I'm actually holding the Shotcut logo. And we're just going to keep doing that until we're done tracking it to our clip. Now it's going to take a while. So here are some tips while we wait. First one is to be patient because it's going to take a while, especially if you have an ambitious sequence you want to do. Second tip, the more keyframes you have that are detailed and precise, the better the tracking animation will look. It just works like that. And the third tip, I've seen other people actually hold down the arrow key to move forward and move the image that they're tracking at the same time to make the process faster. But I actually find it not to be the best looking end result by using this technique, so to each their own. But if you found a way to make this process faster, feel free to share it with us. And we are done. It did take a while for a four second clip, but if we hit play, you'll see that the image is now tracked to me. And we definitely want to save this before we go back to Shotcut. So let's do that by clicking on the save icon. Now that we're back to Shotcut, we can now play it to view the animation and it works just perfectly. And you can export it normally as a normal video and it should be good to go. Now that we're done, let's take another look at the final result. See, not too bad for my first try. Now, if you really like this video, I got a full playlist of tutorials like these that you can check out and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.